Hmm, I have a woodworker's quandary. What on earth am I going to make with this? Oh, I know! Let's use the lathe! So I'm going to make a P-Light holder. Not a square one. No, not an hexagonal one, not an octagon, no, a round one. But first of all, we must find the centre while it's still square. So we mark the centre. And then we draw a circle around the piece of wood and mark the centre with the brad on. So I measure the tea light with this vernier gauge and it's 40 millimetres approximately. So the hole needs to be fractionally bigger with the compass so we can fit the chuck. Now this isn't a Ford your chuck or anything complicated like that. It has two drive teeth that engages in the block of wood. So there's my chisel and there's my mallet. Yes, I use a mallet with a chisel and hit my chuck, which then marks the block of wood. And now I'm going to chop a little bit out to make a bit of clearance so the chuck can easily engage into the block of wood. Oh, it's getting tighter, it's fitting nicely it is. A bit deeper, I believe, would be a good idea. We don't want it falling off, no! Tap, 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 tap. Oh, yep, that's done it now, isn't it? So that's engaged, it's not falling off yet. So here we are, we've gone to the little old Electrobeckham 12 inch bandsaw. And it has a 3.8 skip tooth blade in there. Bandsaw blade. So I'm removing the excess, and that bandsaw blade really needs replacing this, as you can see all the burn marks in the walnut. It's not cutting very well, and it's not cutting straight because it's blunt. The set has gone. Yeah. Anyway, it's done its job. It's took the worst off. And now we're going to apply it to the lathe. And this is an old Shapak lathe. I've had it a long, long, long time. We are using the tailstock to force the piece of wood onto the chuck. Unfortunately, the tourist takes up too much room on its mounting base, so I can't get the tailstock really close. So it's sticking out a bit too far, really, but that'll be okay. It'll be alright on the night. Believe it or not, I'm actually recording this live as well. It's going on live to the satellites around the world. Oh, but I thought I'd make a video for you too. So there I have my piece of wood in the lathe. First of all, I check to see whether or not it engages with the tool rest. Thankfully, it does not. Then I turn it on. Oh, look at that, looks dangerous, doesn't it? Spinning around really fast. Oh, first of all, we're going to use this wood turning chisel. Yeah, and it's made by Crown Tools. And it's a high speed steel. Like what they use to make drill bits out of. It's a big hunk of steel, that it is. But it sharpens up very, very well and lasts much longer than standard chisels. So here we go. We carefully peel away the wood from the outside of the block of wood, which has had its corners removed into some kind of round. But now we're going to make it really round with the lathe and a wood turning chisel by Crown Tools. I'll leave a link in the description down below for these crown chisels. They're very good indeed. Robert Sorby's are good as well. And Leslie Eel. So I'll, I can't remember. But hey -o, let's carry on. The block of walnut. That it is. French walnut. No other. So you have to be very careful at this point. Because if it's going to grab, this is when it's going to do it. And as you can see, there's still some flat areas. Where I need to take it back further. Where I need to remove more wood with the chisel to make sure it's perfectly round. And I want to do that before I finalise its shape. Well, we got it nearly round. So we thought we'd start shaping the piece of wood. And I want it to be sort of like a sphere shape. But it'll probably be more like an apple. So we peel that wood away. Slowly but surely to reveal the wood grain and create a shape that is pleasing to the eye. That's the idea. Now I'm not using any gauges or any templates. No, I'm just doing it by eye. It's a one-off, you see, because I've got a random block of wood sitting in the workshop. Now I want to show you other chisels as well. So I'm using a skew chisel now. 
which is like an angular straight chisel. Yet again, it is a high speed steel chisel by Crown Tools. And like I say, it is very good too. So finally we have its shape, and now we're sanding the block of wood. Oh, it's round, very round. Not quite as round as I first envisaged, because I wanted a sphere originally. Now when you're doing any sanding work with the lathe, wear a mask. What is quite a good idea is to have a vacuum cleaner mounted close by to suck as much of that dust up as possible as it leaves your piece of work. It's got to be better in the vacuum cleaner than your lungs. Currently I'm using 180 grit aluminium oxide paper. I'm still shaping the piece but using abrasive paper somewhat. Now as you can see we've got a basic shape there and it's looking rather nice. I've gone down the grits down to about 320 grit but now I've moved on to some very fine 1200 grit. Now one thing you didn't see what I did, I sealed the block of wood before I come to this stage because now I'm wet and drying it believe it or not. It's like what you'd use on a car, motor body prior to painting. Now removing the moisture and creating a bit of heat to help evaporate that moisture because I don't want it soaking in even though the piece of wood is actually sealed. Now if you look you might be able to see that there are still some sanding marks for which must be removed and bit by bit we will do that with this 1200 wet and dry silicon carbide paper. It is really really fine. Now you must use the water with this paper Otherwise it will just clog up. Now, although the colour isn't quite there yet, you can see how smooth it is becoming. As smooth as a baby's bottom. Certainly not mine. So I apply the water and carry on using the wet and dry paper. Just a small amount of water, just enough to create a lubricant and it keeps the paper from clogging up. Yeah, as you see, this, it's not clogged up at all because it's got its lubricant and the pasty look on the actual piece of wood is actually fine sandings mixed with water. It works really well. Now I don't recommend you do this on wood that has not been sealed first, no. Because that would be silly. Because it will soak up the water and take ages to dry and potentially damage your piece of wood. Now it's dry, we apply some wax and this is just turpentine and beeswax, that's all it is. The turpentine helps the evaporation of the beeswax and makes it easier to apply. But the beeswax is left behind to create a pretty finish. So I create a buffer and carry on polishing. So bit by bit we polish our piece of wood. You could use other finishes but I've just chosen to use wax in this case. You could use a lacquer or an epoxy finish or a nitrocellulose. All these finishes will give you a very high gloss finish. Because we are now drilling the hole to accept the tea light candle. Now I'm using a 43mm diameter force a bit. Now a force on a drill bit drills a flat bottomed hole. It still has a little bit of a dimple in the middle, a bit like me. So there we go, we drill into our block of wood, holding it firmly because it's round. So I thought it would be a good idea to get something to grip it with, in this case a non-slip mat. A little bit more sanding, a little bit more polishing, and what do we have? We have a beautiful tea light holder made out of walnut. Oh, ain't that pretty. I hope you like my little video on me making a tea light holder from a scrap of wood. This piece of wood was an off cut from the bottom of a leg. Mine and the missus bed to be exact. What else could we do with it? Maybe you have some ideas. Leave it in the comments down below.
It's always good to use the scraps of wood, you know. Before you go, go, please click like and subscribe, and maybe the little bell icon, because then you get a warm, fuzzy feeling in your pocket every time I upload another video. And please comment down below. And if you want to support us, you can do it on Patreon, or you can buy us a coffee, and the links are also down below. Thank you for watching, and ta-ta.